Berkshire itself has a Fort Knox-like balance sheet, but some of its operating companies may be tight on cash during the pandemic. Uh, would Berkshire consider sending cash to its operating companies to, one, ensure that they can get through the pandemic, and, and two, uh, allow them to increase market share while their competitors struggle? Well, we've sent money to a few, and, and uh, uh, we're in a position to do that. We're not going to send money indefinitely to anything where it looks like uh, their future uh, is not has just changed dramatically from what it was a year or so ago, or even six months ago. You know, we made that decision in terms of the airline business. We took money out of the business, basically, at a, even at a substantial loss. And we will not fund a company that uh, where we think that it's going to chew up money in the in the future. We started out with a company like that in our textile business at Berkshire Hathaway in 1965 and we went for 20 years trying to think we could solve something that wasn't that solvable so uh, we are not in the business of subsidizing uh, any companies with shareholders money if people want to do that with their own money but we're not going to do it on their behalf but we have advanced money we, we're, we're perfectly ready to advance money gaining market share and all that that may happen but but uh the companies that that need money probably uh, market share is not their number one problem. I'll put it that way. <laughs> Greg, would you? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. It's interesting when we look at our different companies as we went into the pandemic or we're addressing the COVID nineteen crisis. Obviously, the first focus by our management team and appropriately was our employees and 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 effectively making sure they're safe and that the business environment we're in that that they could continue to operate then we quickly moved to looking at uh, where our customers were in this cycle i.e what was the underlying demand within the business and and to great credit to our managers they very much have adjusted their businesses consistent with the underlying needs and demands of our of, of our customers so effectively they're moving with uh, with the customer meaning very few of our businesses have actually required funds some have and as Warren said uh, we've advanced the funds to them but the the businesses have really reacted in a way where they're managing consistent with the with uh, where the market's at ie their the demand for their products and Berkshire is almost certain to generate cash i mean at, at uh, nothing's 100 percent certain but but and we're as greg mentioned at, at berkshire hathaway energy we had some short-term financing we, we don't have short-term financing at, at any degree we'll never get ourselves in a position where we have a lot of money that can come due tomorrow and and uh people that were financing uh, heavily with commercial paper and then found their business stopped. Well, you've seen what's happened to the airlines. I mean, they need money. Uh, cruise lines need money. Uh, there's some businesses that, uh, you know, it's just the nature of uh, what they're in. And, uh, Berkshire will never get it in a position where it, uh, it, it needs money. But, uh, uh, and, and we factor in, like I say, we, we factor in some things that are not ridiculously unlikely uh, and I'm not going to spell out scenarios because I to some extent if you start spend, spurring, is, is spelling out scenarios you may increase the chance of them happening so it's not something that we really want to talk about a lot but but our uh, our position will be to be uh, to stay at Fort Knox but we don't need you know, we don't need a Hundred and it's a little higher now than it was at quarter end. We don't need 130 or 35 billion, but we need a lot of money that's always available, and that means we own nothing but treasury bills. I mean, we do not. We've never owned. We never buy commercial paper. We don't buy. We don't count on bank lines. Uh, you know, one or two of our subsidiaries, a few of our subsidiaries have them, but they, we, we, we basically want to be in a position to get through anything, and and we hope we that doesn't happen, but. You can't rule out the possibility any more than in 1929. You could rule out the possibility that that uh, you know you would be waiting until 1955 
or ni the end of 1954, to get even. The, anything can happen, and, and we want to be prepared for anything. But we also want to do big things. If the prices are attractive, as Greg said, there was a period right before the Fed Act, and we were starting to get calls. They weren't attractive calls, but we were getting calls, and the companies we were getting calls from after the Fed Act, that a number of them were able to get money in the public market, frankly, at terms that we wouldn't have given it to them.